Okay, ten. So still dealing with wave sound and light. We've had a bit of a break. Quick reminder: we've looked at transverse waves. So those are the waves where you have your particles moving at right angles to the direction of the wave. Um, examples of that are light. Remember, we spoke about that as well as waves in uh, on water. So waves in an ocean, in a pond, in a lake, something like that. And then we looked at longitudinal waves. That's more like a spring or a slinky, where your particles move parallel to the direction of the wave. An example of that is sound. Uh, that was the last thing that we left off with. We also looked at calculations with waves. So now we're going to start looking at electromagnetic radiation, which you will see um, abbreviated as EMR throughout this section. So three important things with electromagnetic radiation. The first one is that um, visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are many different types of electromagnetic radiation, visible light being on that spectrum. The second important thing is that, and we've already spoken about the fact that light is a type of transverse wave, and if light is a type of electromagnetic radiation as well, then that means that all electromagnetic radiation is transverse. And then the third thing, this one's very important for our calculations, is that all electromagnetic radiation moves at the same speed, and that speed is denoted by the letter C. This is now going to be your first constant that you have to know in physics. It will be on your data sheet. Get comfortable with it, please. That C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And this is the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, and it's not just visible light. It's all electromagnetic radiation. Okay, and remember that C, please, especially when it comes to doing calculations with waves, if they specify it's electromagnetic radiation, then remember we've got this formula, um, V equals frequency times wavelength. Now this V, that's wave speed, hey? If we've got electromagnetic radiation, then this V is equal to C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay, please don't forget that. Okay, then also on your little note, it talks about wave particle duality. So that's how electromagnetic radiation, sometimes in some experiments, we see it behaving like a wave. Okay, it is a wave, but it also has this cool particle nature where when you do some experiments, it almost behaves like matter, like particles. And those particles aren't real particles made out of matter, they're particles made out of energy. Okay, and those energy particles, those little packets of energy, we call those photons. Okay, do not forget this word photons. It's very important. Later on in the topic, we'll talk about um, how to work out the energy of a photon. Okay, now also important in electromagnetic radiation, there's a little bit of theory here, is how electromagnetic radiation actually propagates. Okay, how it works, how it happens. So you're going to bear with me. I'm going to try my best to draw this. We've got... Um, Electromagnetic radiation, the word is, is made up of two parts. So we've got electric fields, and simultaneously we have magnetic fields. Now these two occur at right angles to each other. They are both transverse waves, though. So we've got our electric fields, transverse waves happening like this. And then, now you've got to imagine, this is going up and down. Now the next one I'm going to draw, try and imagine it coming out towards you and then back away from you. Okay, so we've got our electric fields. And then we also have our magnetic fields. Okay, can you kind of imagine that's coming out of the board and back into the board? So it is all explained on your page. Um, I think, what's it called? 3 EMR, okay, that you needed to use while looking or listening to this lesson. Um, so it talks about how these waves propagate, how these things are mutually regenerative. That means when we have an electric field, that changing electric field, it's changing because the position is changing the whole time. The changing electric field actually causes a magnetic field um, to come into existence. And that magnetic field changing in turn causes the electric field to continue. So it's what we call self-rejuvenating. Okay? The electric field causes the magnetic field and the magnetic field causes the electric field. So it's actually really quite cool. Um, then, very important, I don't know to, if it's on your page, let's quickly check. Okay, it's not. So, on your page, you've got a, um, a little diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. 
Tonight, let me quickly pause you while I draw mine on here so you don't have to watch me drawing something you've already got. Okay, so on your electromagnetic spectrum, it shows it going from radio waves on the very left all the way through to gamma rays on the far right. Now, on your diagram, they've actually given you some values for wavelengths. Remember, the wavelength is the distance between two in-phase in points sorry, on successive waves. So your wavelength is the distance between two troughs or two crests or two, any two in-phase points on two successive waves. Okay, now as we go from radio waves across microwaves, infrared, visible light, this is the light that we can see, the electromagnetic radiation that we can actually perceive, UV rays, X-rays and gamma rays. As we move from left to right on the electromagnetic spectrum, our wavelength decreases Okay, so we start with the largest wavelength. Radio waves have the biggest wavelength of, what does it say, approximately a meter. Okay, so quite large. Down to gamma rays, which is times 10 to the negative 13 meters. Okay, very, very small wavelength of gamma rays. And our frequency actually goes the other way. So as we move from radio waves up the spectrum towards gamma rays, our frequency increases. Okay, so remember frequency refers to the number of complete waves that propagate per second. Okay, so frequency, this is your hertz or per second. It's how many waves are forming per second. Now the important thing, the thing that um, affects our daily lives about this, is the frequency, and we're going to get to the calculations in a little bit. Um, this, now what I'm doing is not on your diagram, you need to add it please, the fact that the frequency increases and the uh, wavelength decreases. Now the increasing frequency, that affects our everyday lives because the energy of our electromagnetic radiation, I'm hoping you remember the symbol, is proportional to the frequency. So that means as the frequency increases, as we go from radio waves across to gamma rays, so increased frequency, it means the energy of that electromagnetic radiation also increases. And there's a cat, sorry. Okay, so if our energy is increasing, this also means that the penetrating ability increases. Okay, now what does that mean, the penetrating ability increases? That means how is it actually going to affect human tissue, okay? Radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light does not penetrate human tissue or not to an extent where it can cause any damage. Visible light, actually the reason that we can see things is because visible light is generally not absorbed, okay? It is mostly reflected off the object, which is how we see the object, okay? But as we move further towards gamma rays, the frequency is increasing even more, the energy of our electromagnetic radiation is increasing, which means the penetrating ability is increasing. Now, as the penetrating ability increases, it means it can actually penetrate the matter instead of bouncing off it, being reflected off it. So if we look, for example, x-rays, we know that, right? We've, we've all seen um, an x-ray or we've been for an x-ray. Uh, we know that x-rays, it literally goes through your body. Okay? It goes through tissue, but it will not penetrate bone. So it goes through tissue but reflects off bone, which is how we're able to generate those images. Gamma rays as well, they will penetrate human tissue. And the higher penetrating ability, the higher the frequency, the higher the penetrating ability, that higher energy means that things like gamma rays can cause cancer in that they will penetrate the tissue and the, the cells inside our bodies, what's going to happen is that energy is actually going to be used to break our cells up, the compounds that make us us. So let's say every compound that makes us, oh my goodness, okay, hang on. Okay, sorry guys, I'm back. Okay, so the um, increasing frequency as we move from radio waves across to gamma rays means that the electromagnetic radi radiation actually has more energy, and as that penetrates our cells, it penetrates our tissue, that energy can actually be used to break the bonds between the elements that form the compounds in our cells. And when that happens, we are left with ions. So if we remember what ions are from chemistry, it's when you have an element 
that has a charge due to it having gained or lost electrons. Now, as soon as you have something with a charge, an ion, it's unstable, it will bond with anything near it, which is how we have this mutation of cells, which is how cancer actually forms. Okay, um, that's actually it for this lesson. It's just basically theory. So you would have seen um, that this goes up to 10 to the negative 13. So we've got a range of wavelengths going from 1 meter to 10 to the negative 13 meters. Uh, this notation here, we've seen a little bit. It's scientific notation. And we're going to be doing a lot of calculations with scientific notation in this section. So tomorrow, we're going to take a little break from waves and just focus on how to deal with scientific notation. Okay.